Hey, it's Sam with Billado Services, and today I wanted to show you how Adobe After Effects works with color management and interpreting files for HDR work. If you want to learn how to set up your projects in HDR, jump over to the video that I did introducing HDR in Adobe, where I showed how to set up Adobe After Effects to be working in HDR. This video is all about actually doing that work. We're going to look at color management and we're going to look at color correction for bringing in your assets that you can then do visual effects on. So first thing that I've brought here is just a quick, or the first thing that I have for you is just a very quick color management demo. So this here is the monologue from my introduction video. It was shot on a GH5S in Panasonic V-Log with a V gamut. So right now, when I just bring the file right into Adobe After Effects, you can see that it's brought, brought it in flat. It's interpreting it as a Rec. 709 file. So this is going to look like flat log, the log that we're used to seeing. Now, if I want to look at that in HDR and get it as a good starting point, I'm going to want to color manage that. So I'm going to go over to my asset, right click on it, click on the interpret footage and go to main. And then in the color management tab, I'm going to assign its profile. By default, it's being assigned the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. I'm going to scroll down here, and Adobe has a Panasonic V Gamut V Log color profile. I'm going to assign that. You can see over in my main window that that's immediately changed. And we can see on the external uh, displays that I'm capturing, that looks like normalized footage. It's not graded yet, but at least it's normalized and we have a good starting point for our grade. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and add a Lumetri effect onto that asset. And here I now can do my exposure adjustments up and down. It's a little bit, needs a little bit more finesse, but I can add contrast. And let's cool that off just a little bit. Nope, nope, I wanna warm it. Uh, warm it up and now we've got the start of a really solid HDR clip. And then if I had to do any stabilization, noise reduction, effects of any kind, chroma keys, this is an image that I can start working with in After Effects. I can add my titles, I can do the things that I need to from here to be working in HDR. Now, one thing that I didn't cover in that original video is that if I ever change my bit depth away from 32 bits, I am going to clip my image. So watch what happens when I switch here to a 16 bit and hit OK. Watch what happens to my data. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? Oh, there it goes. You can see over here on my waveform, that everything that was above 100 nits got clipped. So Adobe After Effects needs that floating point in order to preserve that data above the HDR range. Similarly, you also have to have your working spa space set to either Rec. 2100 PQ or Rec. 2100 HLG. If you don't, your ability to use Lumetri is going to be clipped. In fact, it'll only work on the values below 100 nits. It won't do anything for the values above 100 nits. Let me show you how that works. Um, it's completely bizarre, and this will bother you if you if you do anything like that. You can see now that all the values above 100 nits are being clamped while my values below get adjusted. So let's adjust exposure up and down. Suddenly we have a nice little clamp and clip um, by not working in the HDR. That's the same thing if you work in the linear. That's the same thing if you work in any of the other working spaces. You're going to run into those limits unless you're in one of these HLG or PQ grading modes. So we're going to turn that back on, get our footage back, and bring down the brightness a little bit on this. So that's your basic color management. Uh, now, Adobe has a lot of different color profiles that you can assign. But for some of them, like for DGI, which is shot in the D gamut D log, it doesn't have the color profiles. If I go here to these assets, you can see that there is no D gamut D log footage. So what do we do? Well, fortunately, the LUTs that I've built for Adobe Premiere work in HDR or in After Effects to do the color management. So we're just going to add a Lumetri plugin, go to our basic LUTs, go to custom, and we can pick our DGI D gamut LUT. When we open that, this shot that we were just working with in Premiere, which you can jump over to the other video and look at, 
has been normalized the same way that it was normalized in Adobe Premiere. My colors look right on the external display. Now on our comp window, we're actually seeing the flat HDR, which is nice because you can work with that image if you're familiar with working in log content. However, I would really recommend always monitoring in HDR in After Effects. Some effects will push up the brightness well beyond what you think they will. And it's really beneficial to be monitoring even on an HDR television, just something that will let you see that high dynamic range above your bright so that you don't accidentally push the brightness or the peak brightness of that image. If you head over to billetaservices.com slash LUTs, you'll be able to download that LUT um, for DJI as well as some other ones for Adobe Premiere. Um, all of those will work, but if you can use Adobe's native color management, do that, you're always gonna get a better rendering. So what about quirks with working in Adobe HDR? Well, let's go and look at that HLG demo that I built for Premiere. When we look here, this is our base AVC. It's coming in as SDR. Now, I can go into the color management here and assign it a hybrid log gamma profile. In this case, I'm gonna use HLG scene W63. That right there gives me a really, really nice rendering of the content in HDR just as a starting point. You can see it's opened up the shadows, it's given me access to the detail that I, that I want, um, and I can go ahead and adjust the exposure up or down. I found that W63, which is basically trying to match a white point, is the nicest one to start with for HLG. What about HEVC? Well, that footage also comes in properly. Huh, why is that? Well, it's because Adobe After Effects is interpreting it completely different, okay? I can still go here and add my white point, and then those two files are going to match. That's different than it is in Premiere, where your HEVC and your AVC content don't match. What about the ProRes? Well, that is, well, there's nothing on here. That's being rendered at a much brighter scene. That's because the ProRes file is actually coming in initially with the proper color management, right? It's picked up that this is a Rec 2100 HLG file. Now, the thing is, in Premiere, I could assign a different color profile, but here in After Effects, I'm stuck with the Rec 2100 HLG that was in there. There's no way of changing it. Even preserving RGB doesn't affect my image at all. Um, that's a big problem when it comes to working with already graded HDR. So you can see here that my PQ has come in properly. This is my first vlog, and as I skim through, We've got all of the right HDR content. We're gonna hold on this shot because I wanna show you something. Um, but this has come in correctly. But just like we saw in Premiere, as soon as we bring in the HDR10 version, we get some weird behavior. Now in Premiere, this was being stretched all the way up to the 10,000 nits range. But here in After Effects, this is being clipped and crushed somewhere in the 130 to 200 nits range. The red channel is still elevated, which is bizarre, um, but everything else is being clipped and flattened. You can't actually get around that. There's no way of pulling that back. There's no way of actually making that graded HDR10 file work, which means that if you have to use HDR10 HEVC files here in Adobe After Effects, you have to do the conversion to ProRes first. And I'd really, really recommend embedding the correct HDR metadata, because if you do, then you'll come in with the right metadata. And just like we're seeing with this file, it looks exactly the way that it should. This is just a quick overview of some of the quirks and color management procedures for working in HDR in Adobe After Effects. If you get things set up the right way and get this working right, you'll be able to do your chroma key work, effects work, titling work, all in HDR. And again, you'll wanna monitor in HDR on your output so that you can make sure that the image looks right and you're not flattening or clipping your highlights. If you found this tutorial useful, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'll be periodically sharing more tips tricks and tools for working in high dynamic range content. If you haven't already, go and check out my introduction for how HDR works in Premiere and After Effects and my tutorial for the quirks of working in HDR with Adobe Premiere. Head over to billetoservices.com slash LUTs to download those Adobe Premiere 
color management LUTs for HDR. Again, I'm Sam with Bilodeau Services, and I'll see you next time.